So it feels quite weird to be recording a vlog, um, especially just having emerged from my first watch of Bo Burnham's Inside. And I'm just sort of improvising this video. It's not going to be exactly, I'm sure, what everyone anticipated, or myself even, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... It's been a year um, since I moved to LA. And we're well over a year and a half since you know, quarantine happened, in the pandemic, I should say. Um, there's a lot to cover, there's a lot to say, but at the same time, there's really nothing to say, you know what I mean? Um, I will say this, though, that part of my motivation for finally tackling this, um, and, you know, putting it on the back burner and uh, procrastinating it, just because I've been feeling a general ace and depression and lack of motivation but um i just moved and my new room has very great lighting um the whole apartment does so i was like well i'll let that motivate me at least i can look good on camera and like feel good about myself for a little bit just because i really haven't had the energy to doll up or put effort into my appearance because i just feel like the past few months have just been very much like a coasting like almost like a subconscious autopilot like just get through the day you know have your little things that you look forward to for me usually comes in the form of food or substances um because otherwise it's just gonna be you know insufferable to go through a day and not have something to which you can look forward and I think one of the things I've struggled with the most um in this year is you know trying to make a profession of a passion. And again, this is, I'm completely aware, I did this all on my own, it was my own agency, my own choice to move out here, you know, to kind of put everything on the line. Not like I had anything to lose, but um, it has been hard for me, I think, to really enjoy movies to the extent that I used to, um, because, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm not where I want to be yet. I'm not, you know, an accredited critic or historian, um, but there's time yet. But my point being is that it's very hard for me, nearly impossible to watch anything and not feel pressured to write something on it critically. I mean, to watch films for the sake of enjoyment um, as a hobby, as a passion, as, you know, how it started for me. Um, I started really watching films, getting into films in college when I was living by myself and really needed like an escape from reality and you know a hobby into which I could immerse myself but when your hobby is your profession um, sometimes it just you know it um, <laughs> engenders a burnout and I guess that's kind of how I've been feeling um, obviously it's not just films um, it's life in general, it's a compendium of things, and I know that we're all very much in the si like a very similar space, if not the same position, where, you know, especially with the, the second wave of COVID coming about, the Delta variant, it's just infinitely frustrating and infuriating, but I'm not going to get into that, I'm not here to talk politics, um, there's enough of, like, the media and time, like, of the world is already focusing on that so rather I would really just like to use this window of space I guess to give like little tidbits and updates on my life in the past year um a year ago today August 6th I was on the way I was on route to Denver left St. Louis which is our first uh stop on my road trip with my best friend who helped me move out to LA um and we left Boston at like 3 a.m and I'm sure this is all co covered in thorough detail and like the last vlog I did which I believe was the road trip one um but yeah we drove for 20 hours straight and it's just it's kind of insane to think you know in any capacity regardless of a big move you know the future is always uncertain and it's you know I, I will never not be startled by the amount of change that can transpire in a year let alone a day in a second right and I just felt very, you know, I felt very rejuvenated and inspired. And, um, you know, I was just kind of raring to go. 
and um, it's been like a year. It's been it's there's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, I, you know, and I think a lot of this was contingent on the pandemic, but I really found myself at several points um, ensnared in some of the worst mental health episodes I've ever had in my life. Um, I think even despite being introverted, just the lack of social access for such a long time, being so far away from, you know, my my base ground in New England with my family, my friends, a lot of these things, you know, is sort of like a slow pressurization until it just blows. Um, you know, but thankfully for me, it was more like a few episodic, smaller blows and not like a Mount Vesuvius like eruption um but yeah I mean one I guess so for work um I'm now finally one of the good things is that I'm finally working like a steady normal job I mean it's customer service it's minimum wage it's not ideal but um I was quite literally driving myself my brain and my car Ruthie into the ground by doing delivery driving um which it's novelty wore off very fast, you know, and it's very unpredictable. And as somebody who likes certainty and, you know, clear, clean cut, like knowing when I'm gonna get paid, you know, it was, you'd have a bad day and it would just, not getting tips would make that so much worse, you know, it would just really amplify, the, the nature of the job would just amplify whatever emotion um, for better or for worse. But yeah, I'm working in a theater, so at least, you know, I'm movie adjacent, and it's nice to be in a community where others are just as passionate and appreciative of film, and I think that's the thing I've loved about LA the most, um, is just being able to actually engage and actively partake in a community that celebrates and preserves film and history, and where you can go to a bevy of historic theaters and watch just about any show or movie you like, old and new, independent. And that I so value that diversity and treasure it. But at the same time, it's, so, it's infinitely exhausting. Because I feel like, you know, just in the world of anything, in any catalog, there are so many volumes of media and what have you. And there's so many films which I've yet to see. And, you know, of course, it's something to look forward to, but it's also just it's an exhausting reality to confront. Um, so that has been a thing um, with work. Um, I, you know, trying to grow with my writing, but I've been kind of stagnant. You know, I was putting out pieces pretty regularly up until a couple months ago, but I think with everything in the move and a lot of big transitional things like switching jobs, um, it just, I kind of lost my, not my drive, but I kind of lost my my focus. I got, you know, sidelined. And <laughs> there have been a lot of medical things, thankfully nothing serious, but um, a big discovery that I came upon this year um, is that I'm a narcoleptic. And that's mostly cured by um, using Adderall or Ritalin. And I was diagnosed with ADHD in the past, so Getting back on that has been very helpful for me um, because before I'd be napping multiple times a day. I'd be exhausted for no reason. I mean, I'm still very tired all the time. So we're not quite out of the woods yet, but I'm a lot more functional. I mean, there were days where I would just wake up after a full night's rest. Excuse me. And just immediately feel the need to go back into bed and not even on account of general depression. I mean, of course that was there too, but um, you know, it was just, my bones were exhausted. Um, and I'm, I'm very tired now, um, but I think that's more spurned on by just, you know, a lot of emotional overload lately. I've just been really feeling everything intensely. Um, you know, as somebody who's comfortable in stability and routine, um, transitional periods are always difficult for me, especially when it comes to adjusting. and it's part of life and it's a good constructive experience for me and you know it's only going to get better but I'm kind of just going through it right now um but 
you know, it's, it's life. I mean, it makes me happy at least to know that even if I just post this and one person watches it, it makes me happy to know that at least somebody wants to listen, you know? And it's weird to me to think that I used to vlog regularly and sometimes I do miss it. Um, but it's, again, it's all in the energy reserves and even consuming media now, being so invested in it for my career after, I mean, I was almost too just mentally exhausted after watching Inside Out um, to do this, but I kind of pushed myself to get off my ass um, to do that because sometimes you gotta push yourself. But yeah, I mean, I'm one of the things I did want to say, uh, not a big deal, but um, the pandemic and other circumstances, including a history of addiction in my family, uh, led to me um, embarking on a dry spell, not with sex. I mean, that's been involuntary for three years. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, like in January, February, I was very, very much confident that I wanted to stop drinking um, forever and wrote a lot about it. Um, but I've come to the conclusion, and this is my own story, um, again, I do not intend to speak for anybody else, but I realized that it's not what was working for me. And I was fortunate that I never really had a bad relapse. That wasn't it at all. It was just one day I was like, I feel like I've had enough distance and space to reflect on my habits and how often I was drinking and why that I resumed drinking, I would say about a couple months ago. Um, I, I hold myself to very strict standards now, no more than a couple times a week, a certain amount of drinks. You know, I, I, I impose these limits on myself. But I guess I realize, you know, especially when you're so miserable in a pandemic, as long as, you know, anything in, ex in excess can be detrimental and, you know, harmful. And um, life is too short. I'm going to want escapism in every form. That's just the kind of person I am. And it also helps my creative process and my writing. So, and also um, in the past year, I started using marijuana again. Um, I say using because I don't typically smoke. Um, I mean, I will sometimes. And that was a thing that was also a very big, but a really great step forward for me because <laughs> back in my day um, in Massachusetts in like the early 2010s when I was in high school and college, it wasn't legalized. Um, it was, you didn't know what you were getting. You were just literally walking up to your dealer and buying whatever flower he had on him. And I believe that what led to this. I mean, I already had a lot of stuff going on in my life at this point. It was 2015, I was finishing my first year of college and I just, I was smoking and I think the weed was laced because I just had a really, really bad high and I was just spiraling and I was alongside my roommate and my friend and they were just also high but a completely different headspace and I just felt so removed, I felt so, like though it's the worst feeling in the world to feel like nobody can comprehend you, not even yourself sometimes. And um, so that led to a summer where I really reevaluated myself and I had to really pick myself up and rebuild my mental health from scratch because I, you know, that's a subject for another video, but I just remember being in my finals because um, of course this happened right at the end of the semester and just randomly circling in answers that I just couldn't think. I mean, I was so, beside myself. I was just so stricken with anxiety and all this stuff. But anyway, um, now it's 2021. Wow. Um, and, you know, um, weed has been recreationally legal in mass for some time, but especially here in California. And um, I found that consuming edibles has been really conducive to helping me relax and sleep and decompress after a long day because just the way that I'm wired, it's a combination of mental illness and just being inherently like type A to a fault. I don't know how to relax. I don't know how to enjoy downtime. I always feel like I have to be productive in some capacity. And when I, when I have an edible in me, it kind of just allows me to unplug from that and 
feel like a fucking human, you know? So all really good things, a lot of self growth, a lot of self reflecting. Um, not sure what the future holds. Um, it's a little, it's the start of my second year in LA. I want to say good things are in store. I mean, the past month has been, you know, exceptionally better than like my June was. Um, I did go back in May to see some friends and family in Massachusetts and that was really nice. And I'll be going back again in November um, to actually partake in fall this year and see my family have Thanksgiving and believe me celebrate my birthday since you know 25 was wasted and lost to quarantine and I'd like to do something like not that 26 is a big age but you know novelty it's the little things um so yeah with that I will wrap this up let you go um if you watch thank you I really do appreciate you and um who knows maybe you'll get another video from me soon bye <laughs>